In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this handy coat hanger cover. It's really well finished, it's all fully lined and you don't see any of the seams on the inside. So it opens with a zip like so and inside here you can store anything from scarves to match your wardrobe to pieces of jewellery. It's ideal to take with you when you're travelling so you can hang jackets, cardigans, dresses, suits over the top of the hanger and then you can have your muttering accessories inside the pocket as well. But you know it also makes useful storage to maybe hang at the back of the door in your sewing room to keep your sewing bits and bobs in. So although it's designed as a coat hanger to put in your wardrobe I'm sure you're going to find many uses for this around your home. It's very simple and it's very quick to make so here's everything Thing you need to get going and let's get sewing. So this is the fabric for the top of my cover and this measures five inches deep. I've already put some fusible fleece on the back that's Valiseline H640 and the whole length of this is going to be wide enough or a little bit wider than my coat hanger. I'll measure that exactly in just a second. I've also made a bottom piece for my cover out of a coordinating fabric. You could use the same if you like. And again, this is backed with Valiseline. And then I have the zip, which is going to be the whole length. Again, that's just a little bit longer at the moment than the size of my coat hanger. So you could easily make this with a larger coat hanger. It could be one of those non, uh, flock non-slip coat hangers. It could be a child's coat hanger, so you can make this any size that you like. The back I've made from one piece of fabric and I've just cut this for now to the same size as the two front pieces put together but I will need to cut that down to size. I also have two lining pieces which I haven't cut to sizes yet. I'll do that when I finish measuring and marking the front piece. So first of all let's take my coat hanger and my shorter piece of fabric and I'm going to place this half an inch from the top or a centimetre from the top and I'm just going to draw a line around the top of the hanger. I'm going to make a, a little mark where the hole is going to be down to the end and then I'm going to extend this out by another centimetre or half an inch. So my actual fabric is going to be one inch or two and a half centimetres wider than the coat hanger itself. Then let's take my ruler and draw a straight line down the side. So this angle here is a right angle. So this should now be symmetrical. If you're not too sure, the way to make sure it is, is to fold in half and then cut but I'm pretty sure we've got it right here, so we're just going to cut around the line. And I've used um, a heat erasable pen. It really doesn't matter too much, you could use a lead pencil for this because um, you're not going to see the outline because that's going to be incorporated into the seam allowance. So there's the top. Now I can measure the bottom half of the front against the top so I can cut this to exactly the same size widthwise and again make sure these angles are straight and right angles so it's all kept nice and square. Now I need to cut two lining pieces to exactly the same size. So if you have your rotary cutter, ruler and mat, this is a good time to use them. I'm just making sure that I'm not using the selvage on the lining fabric. And using the front, the front two pieces as templates, we're just going to cut around. This is such a, a quick and simple make. Um, and it's a nice gift idea as well. If you've got spare coat hangers, and actually not an awful lot of fabric, then this would be a quick make that you can either sell or give away. So there's one lining piece and we'll do the top to the same size as this one. 
you could add extra pockets as well maybe a patch pocket to the front or decorate the front of it with a little bit of applique the base could be a lot deeper so you can really customize this and make it to the size and the style that you want it to be I like projects like that I like projects where you don't have to go by the rules all the time you're not following a pattern that has to be exact so you can make things a little bit more personal so two lining pieces two front pieces I'm not going to cut the back pieces to size just yet next thing is to sew in the zip so let me just move things out of the way to tidy so first of all with the outside we'll take those two pieces and my zip is going to be sewn right side down so in other words with the slider facing downwards to the top of the bottom half here if you're a seasoned sewer you'll be able to sew these layers all in one go the lining and the outside both together but I'm kind of thinking this is a really good beginner project so we're going to do these in all of the stages so I can show you exactly what to do so I've got a, a too long zip which is I was becoming a bit of a trademark really. I like a zip that's too long because I like to be able to move that slider out of the way while I'm sewing um, so I'm not manoeuvring my stitches or my sewing machine foot around the slider. It means that I don't have stoppers on either end so those metal bits that if you hit with a needle is going to break the needle and I can cut this down to size. I wouldn't do this with a metal zip but with a nylon zip that's absolutely fine. I'm not putting the zipper foot on my sewing machine because with a big foot on my machine like I have I find I, it's not necessary but if you find that easier or if you want to take the stitches right up to the edge then a zipper foot may be easier for you and I don't normally pin with zips if anything I'll use um, a fabric glue pen like a prim aqua marker to hold it in place but I tend to find that with zips if I just hold the edges the edge of the zip to the edge of the fabric it, it's very accurate and very quick it's quicker than pinning and then taking pins out certainly so there's the zip sewn to one half so I'm going to fold it open let me chop off that extra thread here and keep it tidy fold open like so and then right sides together so you see my slide is facing upwards the top is going to face down now this time I'm going to turn it over so I'm still sewing from the zip side because if I sew from this side I can't see exactly where the zip is and where I'm sewing so line up the two edges of the two pieces of fabric here line up the edge of the zip to the edge of the fabric and we're going to sew straight down the center of the tape on the second half always stop with your needle down you're going to be carrying on the seam line in a straight line if you stop with the needle up when you start sewing again you can get a, a bit of an uneven or a skip stitch so all the way down to the end you don't need a fancy sewing machine for this one either I'm only using a straight stitch so a very basic machine would work there is my zip in neatly we need to put the lining pieces on the opposite side now so let's fold this back so there's my outer there's my zip the lining needs to go on this side and it'll go right sides together so in other words if you ignore this section the lining is right sides together with this piece its opposite side now this time I'm going to sew from the side where I can see my stitches so again line up the ends all together line up the edges here and I'm going to go as close as I can to sew on top of that stitch line that I've already made If you're 
using um, different weights of fabric. So obviously with this, the outer fabric is a heavier weight than the lining because I've got the interfacing on the back of it. I have the fusible fleece on the back, which makes it heavier. Sometimes the fabric can meander a little. I do have a, a built-in walking foot on my sewing machine. A walking foot or even feed foot can help the fabric to feed through evenly from both sides but you can see here the lining has turned out a little bit longer than the other side it doesn't matter you can trim this down to size and it's little things like this that make this an ideal project for a complete beginner because if things do go a little bit awry then it doesn't matter they they can be corrected if this is um, a garment and you have one part that's about I don't know half a centimeter um, larger than the opposite side then you could be in trouble because it might not fit but with a coat hanger storage really doesn't matter so I've got the remaining side of the zip here and again the lining is going to go right sides together with this opposite piece which is the outer section there pop it down and again I'm sewing from the side that I can see so line up the edge I've got all of my other section here look and that's nice and neatly out of the way so I'll line up the edges and again sew on top of that same line try not to pull your fabric as you're sewing as well so keep it all very flat don't pull the lining as you're matching it up to the outer because you can distort it and never push your fabric underneath the needle. You see a lot of time with people who are learning to sew, they'll try and help the fabric along under the needle. But your feed dogs are doing a perfectly good job without you doing that. All you're doing is keeping your work flat and guiding it in a straight line. So it's very little work for you to do. So now we have our outer section and our lining section. To help keep this nice and neat I'm going to do a top stitch on the outside and a little tip for you this is just move my machine out of the way this is a 505 spray which is a repositionable spray adhesive and this will help to hold the layers together now as I top stitch and the same on the top side you don't have to do this it's just you know if you happen to have any in, in your stash then it's just um, an easy way of holding the layers together you could always pin it so let's go back to the machine I can use a longer stitch now because this isn't a seam it's more of a decorative stitch so I'm going to go to 2.8 mil on my machine and then let's top stitch just across the edge so try and keep this a nice neat straight line because this is going to be seen and a contrasting thread stands out really nicely but if you're not too confident in your sewing then use a colour which is either neutral, so something like a grey or a beige, or of course the same colour as your fabric would work really well as well. And the same on the other side. And again I'm just smoothing out the fabric as I go. So I'm not pushing or pulling or twisting or distorting. And that, oh come on out. That is looking rather lovely and neat. So now I'm going to chop off the ends of the zip, trim back the meandering lining so it's the same size as the outer. And trim off this bit of the zip. And one final thing to do with the front here, while the zip's open, I'm just going to sew the ends of the zip together. Now you can do that by hand or you can just do a little running stitch backwards and forwards a couple of times on your sewing machine. 
just be careful as you go over the teeth. So take it slowly because you've got a lot of thickness there. But with a nylon zip, that's going to be fine for your machine to sew over. So we have this. Just got a, an extra bit of meanderage to chop off the bottom. Then we'll use this section. Oh, that's not very even. There we go. As a template for the back two pieces. So that's the outer back. So just going to cut around here. And then we'll use this again as a template for a lining piece to cut out the same shape. If you're going to make a few of these and your coat hangers are all the same size, then it may be an idea to make a paper pattern. So we can just cut around all of these pieces in, um, in one go. If I'm making a, a few of anything, I like to cut out all of the pieces for every one that I'm making and then sew them all together in the same stages. You might prefer to do something different, that's just the way I like to do it. So if I was going to make half a dozen of these, I'd cut a paper pattern, cut out all of the shapes, maybe do all of the zips at the same time, and then do the rest of the construction all at the same time as well. There we go. So that's the back section, and that's the back lining. So let's sew these together. This may seem a little bit tricky, but it's, it's not. It's very simple. So we want to sew the front and the back pieces right sides together, but I'm not going to include the lining. So let's move the lining out of the way. Just slightly. And I'm just going to sew around that top curve. Again, if you want to put a few pins in that to hold it in place, that's fine. And I'm just using um, about a quarter of an inch or a six millimetre seam allowance. I say about because it's, it doesn't have to be exact. With the sewing machine with a smaller foot, I would tend to use um, the edge of the foot. So again, all the way around to the other curve and cut. And then we'll do the same with the bottom. So I'm just going to move this back a little bit. I know I did put some sticky on there, but I didn't go right up to the edge. And sew straight across. Now we're going to do the same with the lining pieces. So that's the one side, this is the back. And I just want to sew through the two lining pieces, just around the top and just across the bottom. And moving the front that I've just sewn right out of the way. And then we'll do the same across the bottom two pieces. So let's move again the opposite side out of the way. So I'm just sewing through the linings. 
If again you're, you're an experienced sewer, you'll probably be able to do a lot of these procedures in one go. But I think this way kind of makes sense to anybody that hasn't seen this kind of technique before. Now this time I need to leave a gap. So I'm going to stop sewing here. There you go, you can see better there. Leave a gap of around about four inches, 10 centimeters, and carry on sewing. So we've got the two sections like so. There's the lining and there's the outer section. Now we can sew the sides together. And we can sew all the way down each side through all layers. Again, careful when you come to the zip. Careful as in just go a little bit slower. And that would be the same in any thick fabric, I would say. If you're coming up to a, a seam in a pair of jeans and it happens to be very thick, just take it slow on your sewing machine and you'll find that it will cope with thick fabrics a lot better. So straight down the other side. And now we can turn it the right side out. So let's pull this side through first of all. So everything's going through the lining. And you'll see that you are left with a hole in the lining. Forgot to mention the zip's open. Must make sure that the zip is open. Pull the sides of the hole in the lining away from each other and we're just going to sew straight over the top of that gap. It looks a little bit odd at the moment because it looks like it's still all inside out, which kind of is. And then turn the whole thing through again. And because of the way that we put this together, you don't see any joining in the seam on the outside. It's a continuous line. And I think that gives it a really professional finish. So let's push all of this out. Then your hanger goes inside. Remember you left the holes at the top. So let's manoeuvre the hook through the two holes first of all. There we go. Push the hanger inside and that should fit nice and snugly. And we're finished. So really useful storage to hang in your wardrobe or for when you go and travelling. And it's all padded and fully lined and I think it would make a lovely gift idea as well. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you enjoy making yours.